So uh, welcome to this afternoon make along session with Jim Parkin for Digital Graph Festival. It's November the 14th and Sunday and we're sat here having a wonderful time making our models and if you're watching back on YouTube thank you very much. So uh, without further ado I'm going to introduce our wonderful maker extraordinaire, the king of clay, it's Jim Parkin himself. Hello Jim. I'll take that, I like that, that's rather good. Um, good afternoon Andy, how are you doing? Um, it, it, it looks like you are beside a kind of a Victorian uh, changing booth with your uh, your kind of black cloth and your, and your beach scene. So uh, yeah, I rather like that. Uh, you, you got it. You got it first time round. That's exactly where I am. So this is. Don't worry, guys. I'm not outside. This is a, a photograph of Felix there. But I'm in sunny Suffolk. Jim, why don't you tell people where you are? Um, I am currently in my kitchen. Is that what you wanted to know? <laughs> So Jim's in his kitchen, I am in my studio under the stairs, and uh, we've got lots of people joining us from all over the country to do a digital craft festival. As I said, we are recording this, so if you are happy for your cameras to be on, you, you may appear in the recording, and if you don't want to, you can have them switched off. Uh, we have no pleasure, and you have no pleasure of us switching our cameras. Off. But um, we are going to be going through a, a wonderful make. We've done this twice before. Uh, we did Roddy the Reindeer and we did a Daffodil, didn't we, previously? That's right, yes, yes. So why don't you spill the beans and tell people what we are making today? Um, well, I thought um, we'd make something slightly Christmassy. Um, Andy's, I didn't get the memo about wearing a Christmas jumper, but um, uh, Andy <laughs> has given a bit of a clue. So we're going to make a kind of Christmas theme. I thought we'd make penguins, actually. Yay! So um, I'm a, you know, a big fan of penguins and there was a good story I was reading this morning actually about uh, an Adelie penguin washing up on the shores of, uh, of New Zealand, actually from the Antarctic. It uh, drifted 3,000 miles out of its way um, and was just found on a beach by uh, a, an Indian family in New Zealand had just been walking the beach and found a penguin, thought it was a plush toy. And uh, turns out it was a real penguin. So um, it seems. So, so you're fun. really, but you're really passionate about uh, kind of making things, uh, making na nature's forms, animals, aren't you? In in plasticity. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. I love um, I love nature and and um, photography and and animal art really. So um, yeah, and I'm kind of famous for um, creature comforts is one of the things I'm, I'm more famous for. Um, so making funny animals is really kind of my thing. I'm the funny animal guy. Um, yeah, I think that's important yeah. to say. So we've got Jim Parkin here. If you don't know who Jim Parkin is, then you've never lived. But Jim, let's just highlight a little bit about, you know, that's what you're known for. So you've you've worked for all sorts of uh, different people. So just tell us a little potted history of who they, who you are and how people can find you. Well, I'm just struggling because my wife is rather chuckling away uh, off screen at the uh, the things you're saying. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm um, a freelance model maker, but I've worked with the BBC and work with several studios, but primarily with uh, with Ardman Animation. So that's what I'm most famous for, um, being one of the people behind Chicken Run, Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, Timmy, Creature Comforts and, and all sorts of things. Um, and I also have my own little studio in which I produce mostly adverts for Sausage Company. Uh, a good friend of mine who runs a Jolly Hog Sausage Company. That's a, just a little throwaway, it's not really an advert. But, um, <laughs> but yes, and, uh, and Community Clay Time, which is uh, very similar to, well, essentially what we're doing today is uh, yeah. I mean, making it online and um yeah. and this is where i met you andy yeah community clay time for those of you who weren't watching last year um or the year before actually uh, uh, at the start of lockdown jim like many creatives was uh, lost everything um uh, and work quite had gone and, and it created this online uh kind of experience every day where we sat and made things out of clay and uh, as as a fan of of Ardman and a fan of, of what turned out to be jim's work uh it was a wonderful experience for me and many many people and we all made and from it came all of these opportunities and it's just a pleasure for me to actually be talking to you rather than just typing so um that's where this all came from and community clay time the videos are out there on uh, your youtube channel people can go back and watch many of them can't they yeah totally totally there's lots out there um anything from I think, dinosaurs uh, freddie mercury granddad um <laughs> all sorts of different stuff um yeah you name it we've kind of we've kind of made it um and always often always suggested really put into a big goldfish bowl and picked out the goldfish bowl um at random every day or every week and um then we'll see what we make so it's all down to the public really um and it offers up some amazing surprises and there's just a few of them i'll give you there beer bottles um yeah and, and all sorts of things so um so yeah but i think actually while we're while we're chatting we should probably get hold of some clay we should um, fire away and tell us then jim so what what do we need today and, and how do we get started with model making well um 
it's a penguin. It's black and white. So I think um, obviously that's your main colours. Um, I think we might have a crack at making some baby penguins as well, perhaps. So um, I've got some grey. In fact, you can just see on the top of the screen on hand cam. By the way, if, if you're appalled by my face um, or you want to see closer up detail of what's going on, you can pin the um, hand cam. There it is. There um, it is. And you can get closer detail of what's happening as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm facing, I'm talking and I'm wiggling my fingers at the same time, proving that I can do two things at once. Um, it proves, it's yet to be proved whether I can actually make a penguin and talk at the same time. So um, you start whatever you're making by warming up your clay. So choose your base colour. Um, being a penguin, I'm going to go for black. I think that's quite a good base colour to start off with. Um, and I'm going to take a couple of bits and you can choose whatever size you want, really. But get your clay nice and warm, essentially, is the is the first stage. And the warmer the clay gets, the softer it gets and the easier it is to work with. If you've got wet whites around, then that's quite handy to keep everything nice and clean. Um, otherwise, just embrace the mess, I say, really. Um, you might and you might said about here as well, but um, they'll come in later on. Sorry, Andy. You, yeah. You, sorry, yeah, you've said about this in the past, Jim, and I know that you know, while you're warming that up, you've always, like when I've chatted to you on, on like radio bits and live, you have you often have clay there just out of camera that you're modelling with and using uh, while you're chatting, don't you? Um, it's a good um, kind of stress relief, and it's a kind of, again, while my hands are doing something, it's taking my mind off the... Um, the kind of thing that can be a bit frightening in, in hand. So, um, so yeah, I've often got the kind of comfort blanket of plasticine, um, yeah, to hand and uh, to keep me calm, really, which is, is quite a nice thing. In fact, I was saying the, the company that make this clay um, also do um, an essential oils version of plasticine. So as you squeeze it, it releases a sense of lavender and um, all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful uh, scents. So I've, I might actually get to hold of some of that instead and... Uh, and have that kind of wafting through the uh, through the room as well, instead of sausages, which is what I've currently got. I can see there's quite a lot of people here, and a few people still coming in right now. And, and Marin is busy in the background letting these people in. So welcome if you've just joined us. So you haven't missed anything yet. Jim is warming up um, an amount of black. Uh, in, in this case, plasticine. You could be using icing or play-doh or clay or or, or fimo or any of those other sort of uh, uh, pieces of material. So don't worry if you're not using exactly the same thing and also I know that Jim you're very much up for people exploring colour aren't you? Absolutely totally so I mean I mean who's to say that a penguin is black you know and white really it could be it could be any colour you like but um let's you know I'm going to stick with the traditional tones for now um I might break out some colours later on as they're there if I need them um so it's all about baking uh baking it's not about baking this isn't the bake-off um, <laughs> it's all about um, breaking down things into, into basic shapes and once you've got your clay up, I'm just going to portion off a little bit of this because I'm going to want some for some flippers. So I'm just going to take off a little bit of clay, um, about that much. And again, it doesn't really matter about sizes. You can make whatever size you like. And I'm going to start by making a kind of egg shape. Ooh, so okay, yeah. right, okay. So I'm, I'm also trying to these guys in the background. I'm not succeeding at the moment. My, my clay is quite cold. But don't worry if you get lost because you can always uh, watch this back when it's uploaded onto YouTube with Craft Festival. But making an egg then, how would you advise people to do this? Start with a ball. And I don't know about you, but I like to think about an egg as a kind of upside down carrot, a chubby upside down carrot. And the easiest way to make a carrot is to start with a ball. And then you put your hands in a kind of V-like shape. You can see that on camera. And if, with a bit of friction, if you run them backwards and forwards like so, you can see you start to make a kind of fat carrot, I oh, suppose. Yes. Um, and what I'm interested in really is this nice round end, the, um, which will be the base of the penguin. So we've got a nice round bottom, and that's going to be your penguin's bottom. And then I'm going to soften the pointed end of my penguin. So I'm, while you're doing that, I'm going to get Merrin to just go back to my camera and, and I'll show you that I'm making a video one. So which I've got here. And there you oh, go. You can see. There's mine. So it's um, I know you, you're very much up for people getting thumb marks on it and not worrying too much, are you? Totally, totally. I think you can you can embrace the handmade look, really. And as you were saying, you could use all sorts of clay. You could use polymer clays like Sculpey and Fimo. Um, you could use um, Play-Doh, but it doesn't stick so well to itself. You could use DAS and air drying clays and things like that. Um, yeah, uh, all sorts really. Or as I say, icing is great and you can animate with icing as well. So that's, um, it's kind of got a positive 
benefit there as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end, the bottom end of my uh, egg, and I'm going to pinch out a kind of slightly triangular point, a little bit of a tail. Because oh, okay. I do have a tail. And although I like my things to be cartoony, I like them to be based on a little bit of reality. And I think that's, it's just a nice little um, feature to add on. Also, to be honest, it's also a bit of a, um, a stabiliser. So it will stop your penguin from falling over backwards, which is going to be a good thing as well. So, so just hold that up for us, Jim. So yeah. sideways, we can see the profile. Um, just so we can... Cam or hand cam. Um, uh, hand but, cam. Yeah, yeah, show us with the hand cam, and then we can just have a quick look and see what shape you've got, so people can try and follow so that as well. If you if you look at it from... Oops, get my camera angles right. If you look at it from the base, it's kind of like a teardrop shape. Excellent. And again, I'm not worrying about it being too smooth at this stage. I can worry about that later on. But that will act, as I say, as a kind of... Um, as a stabiliser, my penguin already it's standing quite nicely. I love the fact that this also, I mean, straight away, people might be saying, oh, well, I'm working in brown. Mine could be a robin. And that I know you love it when people go off piste and do their own thing. Totally, totally. This is only the base, really. This is the thing to give you inspiration to make your own creations as well. So, um, so yeah, totally feel free to, um, to kind of you know, rock your own magic as well with this. Um, I'm just pushing a little bit of a roundness to the back as well so i'm giving it a little bit of a front so it's not a complete perfect it's slight, slightly off slightly off camera with the hands Jim. so oh, sorry, there we go, there go. A little bit close and um there we go and this is the powers of working with black clay as well i've realized actually in in uh, in lighting these and actually that's the same problem we have in the studio as well it is making characters that are um you know traditionally black and white like um penguins and like sean the sheep trying to keep them um, well lit so actually often we'll make a penguin in grey um, because it, it you can you can turn up the, um, the the contrast on the footage and and make it blacker if you need to um, so it's always a little bit tricky to, to make a black character. So you can see that look, look at that though guys if if, um, if you just have a look at what Jim's made there so you can make stubby ones you can make uh, tall ones I'm trying yeah. to make one here very much looks like the profile of a, of a bird already um, and, and don't worry you can amend these and change these later so I think in my light you can just about see what is yeah. going on there yeah, and just to say guys if you've got questions then you just fire them up in the comments and we'll we'll come to them and try and answer them as well so there you go so we're at that stage I like it it's already looking very much like a penguin we've kind of got a, bit, a little bit of character going on there haven't we so that's nice so I'm going to just I'm just going to park that that penguin there oh. and I'm going to take um, the rest of the clay and I'm going to take off two small balls of clay. Now these are, I'm trying to get them the same size if I can, and I'd say they're the size of, I don't know, this is pushing the, a large Malteser or a good size marble. It's always food items that I base things on because not everybody understands geometry, but they do understand carrots and peas and sausages. So, um, so there we go. I think they're pretty much the same size. I'll move it. I okay, so we've got two two round balls uh, of black plasticine. Now, I kind of guess I know where these are going, but some of you out there might be thinking, "What on earth is he going to do with these?" So, yeah, what we that, do, by the way, that's what. Sorry, it's not that. By the way, it's going to be <laughs> carrots. It's going to be. Uh, I'm making carrots, and they're going to be wings. Wow, <laughs> carrots. So again, like we did with the body. Uh, we're going to make little carrots, like so. Little fat carrots is kind of what we're after. And if you make each one into a carrot, and then you can flatten it with your thumb and finger. And what you can do, if you're feeling a little bit um, confident, you can taper the tip of the wing to be thinner, and then go kind of fatter as you go up there as well. So you can see it looks like a carrot one way, and then it's flat the other or slightly okay. your tip. Can we see that? Um, can we see you hold that up um, with a face cam as well? Because I think that would be interesting yeah. just to see again, because I mean, we've got hands, but there we go. You can see against the, the white background of, of Jim's room, you can see it, it looks like it looks like a wing already. So it's it's a wonderful shape, slightly tapered as well around the edges. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that. I like the look of that. That looks really good. So if you're making these at home, are we making uh, two two the same or how does this work yeah i i would start with two the same 
and then you can um, you can then pose them. So um, you could have them up in the air, or you could have them bent a bit back. You can kind of give a little bit of personality and decide what your penguins do. As it's a cartoon, your penguins could be holding something, a fishing rod, um, a present of some time, a Christmas present or um, something like that. So um, as we're kind of going towards a seasonal feel, it still feels a little bit early, but I'm going, I'm going to rock the, the Christmas thing. It's too late for Halloween, so we're not going to go for a horror penguin and we're going to go for a kind of festive penguin. And, and you know, I am seeing Christmas decorations out there and where I have my studio in, um, in Willsbridge Mill, they've already um, decorated the shop for Christmas. So it's really got that, um, that vibe going on. So I thought, you know, it's appropriate. You, you don't have to excuse your Christmas vibes. I'm all for that. And I know that um, I, mean, I was watching one of Sarah's lives on Instagram and she had a wonderful fire crackling in the background with the hygge feeling of Christmas coming through. So, um, so yeah, I think it's quite nice to, to get the festival rolling. And as you said, you can make these out of, um, uh, as cake toppers, you've said this before. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you can choose to, um, I might, well, we're going to have time, I think, I'm going to show you a couple of different poses. So what we could do with them is have this shape that we've got at the moment. I could bend it over and have the head bent backwards, and then you could have them skating on their tummies to go across <laughs> the, the ice flow. You know, you can do all sorts of things. You can have them balancing on one leg. So you could have a whole scenario of different penguins at play on the crisp white icing um, ice flow of your cake as well. Now we've got these two kind of carroty shapes. I'm actually gonna take the top, I say the top quarter off, I'm actually gonna tear that round bit off and I can use that later on. The great thing with, with modeling clay like this is you can reuse it time and time again. And if you're not happy with it, you just squash the shapes and restart as well. So that's absolutely fine. So I've now got that's this- The, um, the chunky end you took off or the, or the thin end? Uh, the fat end, yeah, took the fat yeah. end off. And I'm just gonna pinch the fatter end and slightly flatten it because it's going to sit on the side of the body of the penguin. Okay. Like so. And again, it's up to you how big your wings are. So again, I'm going to take a slightly larger amount off until I'm happy with where the wings are going to sit. But I think that's looking pretty good. Jim, um, can you have a look at mine and see whether this is roughly the right idea? Because obviously, yeah. you know, you're the teacher and I'm just, how does that do, You could go maybe a little bit shorter. I mean, he's quite well winged for a penguin, really. Because so, they don't yeah. fly, do they? They swim underwater, they don't fly. Yeah, so I need exactly. to They're, um, move a bit more off the top and make them slightly diddier. Yeah, I think, yeah, take a little bit of material off. And then what you're going to do is we stick it on the side like so. And then if you drag your finger and the clay up from the top of the wing onto the head of the penguin or the upper part of the penguin, you can kind of graduate it up and it gives you a nice, um, a kind of, a nice graduation from one to the other and you can see that just about on there now that it's it's kind of flowing nicely one shape into the other and that's now what, nice I, what I love about this is mine looks somewhat like a fat pigeon at the moment and I know that when we did uh, community clay time the amount of times people would say when you were doing a fox or something mine looks like a, a rat or whatever it was but really do you know what if it does end up being a, uh, a little fat pigeon I'm not that bothered it's okay uh, so at the moment mine looks very much unlike a penguin and at the same time things suddenly with a bit of moving the clarin can suddenly look like the real thing as well can't they totally totally you've got to have a little bit of faith in yourself and, and that's absolutely fine um so again i'm just going to do the same with the other one and i can choose on a pose later on. i might just go for a, a kind of a more neutral pose for this penguin but with this approach you can make very quickly make you know hundreds really it depends on how much clay you've got really but um or how much material you've got but you can very quickly start to populate a um a set you might want to you know a penguin based animation and you could make lots of them for that we might want to make replacement penguins stunt penguins for doing extreme <laughs> well i'm going to ask you a question about that based on, and guys honestly any questions for jim about his career in uh, in um, model making or or anything similar what we're doing today do fire them up but um, I was going to ask you, you, you have a term that you used when you were making um, uh, certain films and it's something to do with bunnies per, I can't remember it. Can you just tell us what that was? I, um, we'd have to work at, well, you have to make a lot of bunnies. We'd have to make about 900 bunnies um, for the film, uh, for the curse of the wearer of it. And we have to work at a rate of eight BPD, which is eight bunnies per day. So about <laughs> one an hour. So you make, very similar to what we're doing now, you make lots of um, 
body parts and then you assemble them. And at the end of the day, you've got a pile of, of rabbits or penguins or what have you. And what it does is it enables you to, if you assemble all the parts as a kind of kit, like you're making Lego, and then you, you put them all together, there's a better chance that they're all going to look the same. Um, otherwise, you can just randomly do it if you want to have that. If you want to have tall ones, thin ones, old ones, you can absolutely play around with that. And that's that's absolutely fine. But there we go. I've got this little, quite charming but, little penguin now, I think. Can you hold him up to your face cam as well for us? I think yeah, um, it's quite nice to see it in relation size-wise to you as well. So look at this, guys. This is looking fantastic. While Jim's just rotating that and showing us, there's a few wonderful questions come in already. Um, and the first one is, um, says, did you work on Trapdoor? They're a big fan. And I know that me and you have discussed this in previous uh, uh, conversations. And actually, it's a great question. And I'm a huge fan too. But don't be afraid of what's down that Trapdoor. Jim, take it away. Well, yeah, I was a huge fan. Um, despite my aging looks, I was but a child when, uh, when Trapdoor came out and not certainly not working age. Um, but I've had the great fortune to work with um, a dear friend of mine, Terry Brain, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and we talked a lot about Trapdoor and Trapdoor was really influential um, on my career. It's kind of one of the things that made me want to make animation and made me think perhaps it was something you could do. Um, I didn't really get a sense of scale of it and size of it until I actually met Terry and and met Burke and Boney and, and Drop the Spider as well. So um, in which case I then found that they were absolutely huge. Um, oh, were they? Huge. So how big were they? Um, well, well, Burke himself would be about nearly a foot tall. So really <laughs> quite a big old lump of plasticine, really. Um, so that made, you know, he would about fit in the palm of your hand. So that kind of gives you a scale of how big these things were. But that's what um, enabled them to have all those wiggling worms and other beasts that were, you know, constantly boiling around. And that was the, the kind of the joy of that, really. Um, it was absolutely, um, yeah, inspirational to me. But um, so, no, sadly, I would have loved to have worked on it. But um, we talked about an awful lot of things, Terry and I, and, you know, um, we talked about the kind of things he was bemused about with them. Um, he, he helped and advised Ricky Gervais on flanimals, you know, so you can definitely see his influence on that. And, you know, kind of hanging out with Ricky Gervais was quite a weird thing for him. And seeing somebody with that much fame when you work in animation and you're very much behind the scenes, being someone who's, who's very much in front of the camera and in front of the people was quite a, a weird experience for him. But I think he, he rather enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it, it kind of feeds on nicely to um, how somebody's asked, uh, how long do plasticine models last? Can they stay good for years? And I know that you actually do have uh, some of your early creations still. So do you want to tell people how they can keep theirs good, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, just wiping some of the black off my hands because I don't have any wet wipes with me today. I'm trying to wean myself off wet wipes. They say they're environmentally friendly, but I'm not quite convinced. So I'm just going to get the worst of the black clay off. Um, so yes, if you look after these, um, keep the sunlight off them. So don't put them in the windowsill and you keep them dust free. They can last for well, months or, or certainly years um, if you're really careful with them. So you can put them in little... Um, little cases, little box frames and things like that, or um, or little domes. And people have, I've seen people have put them in little glass domes. Like you can find that, you know, um, IKEA, they have all those kind of things. So don't always yeah. have to put them, but they are really great for keeping your creations in. And you can make little printed backgrounds or draw your own dioramas to put your creations in there. And I've got some from, yeah, from 2000, um, some Rex Run puppets. Uh, and a few other ones that are around over the years, and they're still they're still going strong. You couldn't animate with them, but you could, you know, have them on display, which is really yeah. nice to have a little memento of your of your time there. Now, I found that like with some of mine from the community clay time, I didn't make the joins as well as what we're saying, and sometimes I'd find I'd go into my studio and in the little cupboard was like a head that dropped off, and I'd have to tentatively go back and reattach a head. So don't worry, guys, it's all it's all it's just drama that you can you can solve. So yeah. yes, we're we're at a stage now. We're going to move on to the next thing. Thanks for the questions. Uh, we're going to come to some more of them in a bit. So what's next, Jim? So I'm taking some. Well, it's slightly off white I've got here. I realised in, in the darkness of the studio this morning, I picked up. I've actually picked up grommet colour, um, but it's just off white, and that's okay. You know, penguins get grubby, and I think that's absolutely fine. What you can do is take a bit of sacrificial white and roll it in your hands, and what that will do is take off any excess black or remaining black that didn't come off when you were washing your hands. If you decide to wipe your hands between, and it just 
we can use it later on. We can blend colours. And that's what's lovely about plasticine is you can actually, um, you can mix colours like paint. So you can just squeeze it and roll them together. You can pretty much mix any tone you like, really. And I'm doing the same here, and uh, mine has got very grubby. But as you say, um, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, it's, uh, mine was a, an off-white mixed up with all sorts of whites that I had lying around. So how much do we need for this, uh, this section? I would say no more than um, a kind of Cadbury's mini egg. There we go. It's, it's on Easter theme this time. So uh, <laughs> and what we're going to do is make the belly patch. OK. So just warming the clay up. And every time I do this, I always warm the clay up. Even if, say, this shape was exactly what you wanted to make and you want to stick it to your model. I don't know why you'd stick that to your penguin. But um, should you want to, I would always remodel it just because the oils can kind of rise to the surface and it won't stick quite so well. It's always good to get that heat on there as well. Now, what I'm making is literally a little egg shape, like a little tiny egg, as you can see in the in my fingers there and what I'll do then is squash it flat with my thumb and finger like so and then I'm going to start tiny, a tiny egg a tiny egg that you're flattening and how, yeah. how thin are we making it as thin as you dare if you can the thinner the better really so it, it really expands as you're pressing it. it's obviously spreading out but what you want to try and do is preserve the egg shape that's the idea so thinner um, than that um in, that might envelop your entire penguin there, and I've got too much. My, my belly's got too big. It must be Christmas. <laughs> so um, it's the COVID stone that's happened to your penguin, I think. <laughs> so yeah, go as thin as you dare. Can you, I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's really quite thin. I could go thinner than that again, but I'm keeping that egg shape as I go. And what I'll do is I'll offer it up to the tummy of my penguin and see whether it looks all right or not. And I think that looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to tuck it slightly under the underside of the penguin. And when I press it on, it's going to spread out a little bit more as well. And that's absolutely fine. Again, you could choose the shape. I quite like following the shape of your penguin with that white belly patch, but you could have a rounder one. It could be a disc shape. Um, you know, you can add a bit of your own personality in there as well, really. And are you pushing it on or are you um, sort of like stroking it onto the surface as well? What, what are you actually doing? With that? In this case, I'm just pushing it on and kind of almost, yeah, embedding it into oh. the into the black clay. That way I want a nice crisp line. You can see the, the that's it. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Awesome. Jim Parkinson yeah. said my work was beautiful. I'm going to go now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pressing it on like that and trying to keep my thumbs away from the actual black clay then. So it's just keeping a good kind of differential, like so. Yeah. Don't worry guys, I am still here. I'm just uh, dining out on that. I've recorded it. I'll be putting out on my socials that Jim Parkin said my model was, uh, was beautiful. So, um, and I'm sure he's gonna say the same to all of you. While we're on here, somebody says, are you gonna be working on Chicken Run 2, Jim? Um, the honest answer is I don't really know. I'm on tour a lot at the moment, so, um, so I've got uh, a lot of teaching that I'm doing. So I'm not doing a lot of live events. So um, I did the first chicken run. Um, I'd probably like to have a hand in it, but um, at the moment I'm having a really good time traveling around the country, um, teaching people. And I've got a few of my own projects going on, which are all a bit top secret at the moment. So um, that's pulled me away from that part of the studio at the moment. But um, the live stuff I'm doing is really lovely and getting to do this on a Sunday afternoon. It's a little bit gray here in Bristol. There we go, I said where I am now. We're uh, on the outskirts of Bristol and um, it's quite nice actually. It's a little bit, it's not that chilly out, but it's not the nicest day. So um, it's quite nice to spend your afternoon really. I like that we're coming from two areas with have a rolling of the R's. So I'm from uh, sunny Suffolk where we have a rural Suffolk accent and it's often confused with West Country, Bristol. It's totally different. But we are, we are those two parts of the world. We like to spread wide and thin across the UK. So we've got something that's now resembling a penguin. What's next up, Jim? Well, I, again, I'm going to um, go with the cartoon penguin thing. I'm going to go for an orange beak. Oh, OK. Um, and you can decide to go for whatever colour you like really but I just like the zinginess of it and I think it's quite nice to make them a bit I could go for a grey beak and I've done penguins before with grey beaks and they've been quite a stickler for um for you know natural colours um today I'm going to buck that trend I'm going to go for an orange beak how much how much have you got then is this like a, a small pea or uh... um, well this one I would well I've gone for a kind of chickpea at a push there, there we go um, 
but again it depends on the size of your penguin and what you're going to do with it really so you could you might want a little beak or you might want a big beak and what i'm going to do again it's all about carrots i'm afraid andy it's and it's down to the carrots again so this is what i love so when if those of you who hear jim talking about carrots a lot uh when we did community clay time jim jim ran this this community clay time last year and uh, he would always say carrots, and then the emojis of carrots would fly up on the screen. So um, I'm glad we're in Zoom, because there's a carrot-free emoji zone, unless you can do it, guys. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Let's, uh, let's see what we're doing next. I'm offering up my carrot to see whether I'm happy with the size. I'm thinking it's a little bit excessive, so I'm gonna take some off. And it's okay to do this. It's okay to, to offer your clay up and, and see um, if you're happy with it or not. So I'm gonna flatten the top of the carrot, uh, you could go for a conical one. I'm actually going to then flatten it in two ways. So almost like you've cut the top off a carrot. So you've taken the green bit off your carrot and then you've chopped it down the length, essentially mm -hmm. in half. You've got a, a half carrot or a hay carrot, a semi carrot. Okay, okay so semi carrot. Um, so very beak looking. Can you hold it to the camera so we can see it? I don't know if we'll be able to. Um, and do, do they have like a... Um, do they have like a really sharp point to their beaks or, or, or no, what do we do? Let's try, let's try face cam, that might be easier. Sorry, I'm making... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> All good. Um, so, so we've got, um, I've done mine quite, quite stubby. I don't, let's have a look at yours and see. Um, I've got a slight bend on mine actually, but I quite like oh, that. Look, look at that. Oh, isn't he cute? And also the penguin. So, um, so, <laughs> so here we go. So we've got this little, little beak. Mine's... Mine's got a grubby beak, so I think he's been eating too many chocolates. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you can choose, the, like they say, the size of your beak, but I think that looks quite quite good for this particular one. Um, and, you know, the personalities come out and you never quite know what you're going to get. Um, and I quite like that, really. I, I'm a bit more fast and loose with the approach. Some people like to have a very strong design. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah. Mine, has been, mine has been on the mince pies already. But I, like you just said, I love the fact I could make an elongated one with a long thin beak, a short stubby little ch character like this. Um, and, I, and I really love that you can almost hear them speaking already. Yeah, totally. Um, so I think I'm gonna add eyes at this stage. Okay. Now you've got two approaches. I think I'm gonna go for little white eyes. So I'm gonna use the end of a tool. Um, you could use the end of a paintbrush or you could use a cocktail stick, but I'm gonna put in two little eye sockets essentially. And it's really rather hard to show you. Again, I might have to go to, to face cam to show you the actual um, shapes I've made. But essentially, I've made two little eye sockets. I'm going to put the, the penguin closer to the camera. You can just see it in the light there. Look. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So you've got these little holes. And, and where you put them close together, far apart, someone has found the carrot emoji. But it's fine. Thank okay. you, Louise. No, it we is. appreciate the carrots. So you you put the, the, the tool in, wiggle it around a little bit, making a little tiny uh, eye hole. And they can be close together, far apart, high up, low down. It's entirely up to you. Exactly. It, do you know what? It changes the character so much. And that's what's really fun. You can make so many character changes. And they can be small. They can be large. It's really up to you. Um, and I, I like that creativity. This is what I, all of these things are a starting point for you. And it's, it's, it's not an exam. At the end of the day, it's um, you know, it's just to show you a technique to make your own things. So I'm now going to make some eyes. I'm going to obviously go for little tiny balls of clay. Now eyeballs don't have to be balls; they could be little flat discs. Um, think pingu. You could channel your inner pingu um, and go for that kind of thing. Um, you could go for obviously round. It could be little black beads if you've got like dressmaking pins with glass heads on them. Um, you could cut the most of the uh, body of the pin off and then put in a you know a little glass pin that will give you that kind of feathers McGraw um, type eye that glassy little eye because I know you've said about that before and I, and I went out and got some and they're so good because it means that I mean what is a particularly fiddly part of the process um, actually becomes uh, really really kind of quite instant and, and you can change them as well uh, totally. yeah Oh, um, and Alma, eight years old, has asked, are you going to make a garden? Because I have. Wow. Ooh. I like I that. I wasn't planning on it, but you, you, that's absolutely amazing. 
I can't wait to see that, Alma. So if you're making along at home, at the end of it, we will we will jump around and, and try and show some of your makes as well. And also, um, we would love for you to share them with us. So while Jim's just adding the very small um, uh, eyes into the sockets that he's made, um, uh, if you can use the hashtag um, Digital Craft Festival, and if you can tag in Digital Craft Festival, Craft Festival and at Jim Parkin and also myself, Andy Greenock. And then we'll see your wonderful creations and we'll share them and, and it'd be wonderful. So let's have a look at that then, Jim. How's your little character looking? Getting there. It's slightly ghostly, slightly haunted now. So <laughs> um, I'm going to add some pupils. And again, you could choose a colour. You could, you could just go for straight black and I'm going to go for straight black pupils. Two tiny little balls of black clay. But again, it could be any colour. It's absolutely fine to do that. A blue would really sing out. A green would really sing out. Um, so you can totally, you know, let your imagination go with that. Well, within a limited range of colours. So is this um, a smaller, smaller than the white ball? Yeah. So it's a really, mine is about the size of a poppy seed because I've got quite small eyes. And the thing that people do with plasticine is often make tiny, tiny creations, like only a couple of centimetres across and then say about how fiddly it is. Um, there's absolutely no need to, to make the, your life that difficult, really. So well, like you said, the guys at Trapdoor, uh, when they were making it, it was a foot tall. And I think people are always surprised at how tall uh, other characters are. And they are often 15, 16 inches tall. So, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, you can. And it is a, an inexpensive material. So you can get a whole, uh, you know, I last year because of my uh, you know, super fan status I've been given uh, for community playtime. Um, I bought a 35 kilogram box, which I'm working my way through. <laughs> Excellent. Now, here's an optional extra. This is a maverick twist to things. You could go for, I'm going to go for a rock hopper penguin now, or a macaroni penguin. And if you don't know what they are, they're essentially a kind of a normal penguin, but they have an amazing yellow eyebrow. So I'm feeling I need a shot of colour in there. So, um, so I'm going to add that to mine. You don't have to. Um, you could be very happy. You could add a bubble hat or, um, you know, it could be a baseball cap. I don't know. It could be a, yeah, a very street penguin. That would be uh, absolutely fine. But I'm going to add a kind of a shot of yellow because just, I just think it looks really great. And they were always my childhood um, favourite when I was watching Terry Nutkins on Animal Magic with uh, Rocky the Rock Hopper Penguin. Um, it very much places me in the late 70s, early 80s. Probably early 80s because born in 76. So, yeah, one of my first memories was... Um, these penguins hopping around the studio with that uh, with Johnny Morris and uh, now, I, really I love I love that idea that you're inspired by all of these things from your youth now I've, I've actually put the eyes on mine now unfortunately I made a mistake but I'm going to stick with it I've put the little blue eyes and they've dropped lower down the eyes but now it looks like he's looking down which is quite a, a mistaken uh, happening that's great there's lots of happy accidents in model making really and I think that's that's something that's quite important to remember as well. So you can see I've just made this kind of little, I suppose it's a little swoosh shape. And I'm just going to put it on the top there so you can see just above the eye. Oh, wow. I like little, that. So he's like a punk penguin. Yeah, macaroni penguins. Um, it was named after, the macaroni penguins named after the macaroni style that was this kind of avant-garde um kind of dandy look and i can't remember quite what century it's from but um it gives you this really and it is this crest above their eyebrows and it just gives it a real lift but again you totally don't have to be that i'm just a big fan of macaroni penguins or rock hopper penguins so um i just like the names really so while you're doing that, you're adding these eyebrows, and those of you who decided not for eyebrows, you can spend some time just um, looking at whether the eyes are right. I have been known to, in the past, actually take the eyes back out. It sounds painful, I know, but don't worry, they haven't got any uh, any feelings yet, uh, and, and actually uh, redo them. So don't worry, you can gouge them out and start again if you need to. But I was going to ask you, a lot of people may be interested out there, might be some young budding animators or model makers out there, and um, how did you... Uh, get going like wh wh when can you trace back your kind of like model making life to um well i think i mean i always had a, a a big fascination with art and um and drawing mostly um i kind of ruined quite a few carpets by the time i was kind of banned from playing with plasticine as a child because i'd ruined lots of <laughs> no, you can see, if you go to face cam you can just see the um oh look at him 
Uh, he is very, very, very dapper. So you can you can be really silly with them as well. And, you know, that is based on nature. So, you know, uh, it's... Um, but that's quite quite a fun thing to do. But you could do a bobble hat or, or something else. Like I say, accessorise your penguin is quite good fun, really. Um, yeah, and I'd always played with clay. And whenever I could get hold of it, I would, I would play with it. Um, and, and it wasn't until I got into doing a, a BTEC in design that I kind of rediscovered the joy of, of plasticine, the play with clay thing. And um, it's because I was making some stuff for a, uh, a toy manufacturing uh, project and I wanted to make some figures and I thought, well, this is the easiest way and then I can make some molds from that to create a, a, a figure. Um, and um, I thought, well, I really love this. So I started sculpting stuff and a guy was teaching video art on another course and um, gave us an hour a week for anybody who wasn't studying film to come and have a play with the equipment and play with the cameras. And bear in mind, this was the early nineties. So it was only VHS, so it was very crude. Um, it just got me got me hooked really and I, I really love the process of stop motion and pixelation moving things around the people and things around and um, I was totally drawn in and when he said to me you know you could do a degree in animation then I thought well why would I do anything else and you know that, <laughs> that's it yeah it's amazing isn't it I think it's really important for people to to sort of out there some of the youngsters out there that are watching to realize that there is a there is a a job out there for for playing um and you can get into the world of playing and then get paid to do it totally totally yeah now we should probably move on to feet i think um so yes someone has asked uh, someone's asked here i'm gonna read a bit more out um uh hard um how hard do you have to press pieces uh, together to be sure they are joined that's a really good question uh, and someone has also asked if they will have feet yeah, totally. Feet are essential. Um, they could be grey. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go for grey for the feet. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit and warm that through while we're talking. Um, it's all about getting the heat. So if you've got your element that you're pressing on is nice and warm, and as long as the other piece isn't too cold, then they should stick pretty well, actually. And you shouldn't have to deform them. You know, if you squash them too much, you'll literally squash them and you'll have nothing left. So, um, so yeah, make sure you don't go that far, I would say. Um, and then uh, someone's asked about scoring them, and I'm guessing that they're coming from a pottery background where you would score and yes. put them together. But um, is that necessary? Um, it doesn't really work like that because you need a slip of some kind to to help the two things to to bond together. So um, so yeah, no need for anything like slips or, or cross hatching. It's just about keeping the warmth in there and then sp spreading it and creating the the biggest surface area. Is really the way to look at it is um, to increase the surface area as, as, as much as you can to make sure that they then stick together. Now, feet wise, I'm going to make just little flippers so they can be nice and simple. What colour are you using for the feet, Jim? I'm going to go for grey. Excellent. So um, it's mixing up a little bit, but um, I always like to kind of limit the palette. Obviously, there's, there's a limit you can go with, with penguins anyway. Um, but um, Again, probably the size of a large chickpea, I think. Uh, we've also got a few other things uh, talking about is are there many jobs in the industry, which I'm guessing would depend on, uh, I'm guessing there, is, there are a lot of jobs. And um, is, it, is it Bristol based with Ardman Bean there? Is that really a good place to be? Um, I mean, Bristol's a, a, good, uh, a good place for stop motion, um, but there's plenty of other places in the country. Um, Manchester is particularly a um, good place for stop motion as well. Um, London obviously has um, several big studios of like Wes Anderson films there, Tim Burton films there, um, a lot of the kind of John Lewis and those kind of famous stop motion adverts you'll see have been done at Clapham Road uh, studios. So there are, there can be quite a lot of jobs um, in the industry. Um, it all depends on how many productions are on at the time. So it's a bit of peaks and troughs. It can be a bit feast and famine sometimes, but, um, but you know, there are plenty of people training, studying animation to get foot in the industry as well so um yeah you know you can make a career out of it fantastic now, i think uh, well, just before you do that i'm gonna have to go to face cam for you jim and i'm gonna have to ask you to set to give a shout out to freddie duckett uh, age nine uh he's the biggest fan of sean the sheep wallace the gromit Robert wallace and gromit and uh, for his birthday he asked for wallace's black teapot did you model it but could you just say happy birthday to him 
Oh, happy birthday, Freddie. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, sadly, again, I was a child when, um, when <laughs> Wallace and Grow Up was actually made, but it was the inspiration that got me to where I am today. Um, and I have made teapots for other characters, but sadly not for Wallace and Grow Up. But I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're enjoying the, um, the plasticine playing as well. And, uh, and a few people have got to go off to other meetings, but don't worry, this will be recorded and it will be put out on the yeah, absolutely. YouTube, YouTube in, in, in a few few weeks or months. Um, so you can look forward to, to finding that and watching it back and seeing us make fools of ourselves. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so what's up next then, Jim? Um, so feet. Feet is, is, is definitely what we're after. So we want a nice round ball. I'm then going to squash it down into a button. So not too thin, so you can just about see the thickness of that. And once I've made the button, what I'm actually going to do is pinch it between my fingers like so to make a kind of diamond shape. Or I'm actually aiming for a, a kite shape. So I'm pinching more on one end and less on the other end. So I end up with a kind of sheriff's badge kind of shape. And obviously I need to then flatten it again. This is very similar to blacksmithing, believe it or not, Andy. Um, so I've heard um, you talk to um, oh, the chap from Poll something. Um, Alex Poll, yeah. Alex Pohl. yeah. Yeah, he's, um, he's well, I think he, he's um, been to, to the craft festival on several occasions, an amazing blacksmith. He's just got a book come out actually as well, um, which is very, um, is very good. Um, so do have, follow him on Instagram as well. Um, but what I'm making is this nice kind of um, flattened sheriff's badge or kite shape. And the reason why I say about it being like similar to um, blacksmithing is that when you push it in one direction, it then spreads out. So when you heat metal, when you hit it with a hammer, it will go down, but it will also spread out. So Great. you will always have to counter correct that as you go along. And you can see I'm just pinching out the top to make three little points for toes. And I'm keeping the webbing in there. And again, you can make these as complicated or as pointy or as round as you like. And again, cocktail sticks are a great tool for sculpting. You could always pin them on as well, but I'm just gonna make the two feet up and then literally dump my penguin on top of those feet because it's that simple really don't have to be any more complicated than that we're not even getting into pinning anything because i think it's um you know it's it's pretty simple as it is and i think simplicity is really where you want to be really definitely i'm i'm thoroughly enjoying this i'm totally engrossed i'm actually making um, I know we discussed that we might have some time, but I don't think we necessarily will. I'm going to try and make some presents for this wonderful little uh, little character to to hold. And, and obviously that means I won't be finishing my penguin, but I'll be doing it afterwards. <laughs> That's quite all right. I mean, you can get sidetracked very easily with these things. Um, so I'm just, again, just rounding off those toes and keeping that webbing with it. And hopefully they're not too dissimilar. It needs a little bit more flattening a little bit more profiling and then it'll be ready to go onto the base and that's really the penguin done and then you can accessorize from there so um that's quite a nice simple project but it means that you've got plenty of scope as you can see i'm just going to place my feet to where i'm happy with them and then just bed it on really make sure you don't stick it to the table that's the only um only thing i would say i tend to have the feet either side of that belly patch so you can see it's quite um it's quite charming i think so let's have a look at it in from a front face as well because it's really good lighting and we get to see the character so yeah, jim's absolutely. got his got his uh here ready for you to look at so you can see it's got the little feet it's got a lovely tubby little body and little tail sticking out which is how you can stand it up it's got the macaroni did you call it? yeah a macaroni or a rock hopper penguin um just based on those, but I think it just gives them a little bit of personality. But it would be very easy to peel the um, eyebrows off and go for something else as well. And I think it's quite, um, yeah, a nice simple make, but I think, um, but really effective. And as I say, so easy to do in icing and, and make, you can really easily see a whole host of these um, very quickly, really, as well. So I think I'm going to make a penguin go. present to go with mine. Oh, Andy, that's, yeah, lovely stuff. Because so this one, I made, this one I made earlier, I wanted to say, I've always thought to say, this one I made earlier, this one I've been making now, and I thought I'd, uh, I'd make an Irish cream, other, other drinks are available. Um, so, and, a, and a little, a little tiny characters, now these are probably the wrong scale for what I've made, but I know that actually the penguin could sit on top of it and be very comical. So um, these are the sorts of things you can make, and this is just 
making a, a cube, um, which Jim taught me how to do, and then and making things. Now, I know if you look at these close up, it probably won't show on here. What's the phrase you say about thumbs, Jim? Funny and thummy. And you've got that in there. It's looking really, um, yeah, it's got plenty of texture and life in it, which is what you're after, really. Because if you want to have something that's sheer, shiny plastic, then you're probably not going to get it from, uh, from plastic. Although I know you can kind of like scrape it away and shave it. But really what you're looking for is the character of the thumbprints. And I know that in animations uh, with plasticine, you often see a thumbprint appearing, don't you? Uh, on, on, a, on a character and, and you can see all of that happening in the animations. Exactly. I think it's a fleeting thing because, you know, you're touching these things and you're, you're positioning them, but then you're taking those 25 images a second for film or double images, uh, so 12 and a half frames for, uh, for a TV series or a commercial. So, you know, they are being handled a great deal. And if you're producing seven or eight seconds of animation a day, then, you know, that's a lot of touching. And those are just going to kind of boil across the surface. And there's something quite... Um, quite intimate about that and you can see the maker's mark which I think is is, is part of the joy of it um yeah I think that's really nice and I kind of embrace that really now I'm yeah just... so with Jim's making something else I'm gonna ask you another question somebody has asked how do you find a job in animation and I think that's probably kind of like a big question possibly for for, for someone to to find out from some of your other live conversations but in general how how, how did you go about doing it and what can you suggest to people I mean, I was lucky because I had, when I was leaving college, I, I knew a couple of people who were working in the industry and I approached them and they got me um, to, to have a little interview with um, the guy who was running this very small studio. And I'd recommend you start with a very small studio. And these smaller outfits are really good ways of making um, contact with people in the industry and getting your foot in the door and learning the craft as well without too much pressure. Well, I mean, there is pressure because you know, you've got to make the thing good enough for the production. It's not just, you know, it's not just a game. But um, having those things, also coming on things like this and making contact with people and asking them questions and making yourself known. And, you know, you can get work experience at different studios. And um, that's totally doable. And, you know, and there are enough studios around the country where you could actually approach them for that. And, you know, a week or two of work experience would do you wonders to see a live studio environment and um, and give you the experience that you need to get that foot in the door. It's all about meeting people, really. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I totally agree with that. And I think, obviously, I met you through Instagram and lockdown. We've never met each other in real life. And we're definitely firm friends now. But um, obviously, I can't wait for the invite to be involved in the animations uh, for Ardman 3 yourself, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's joking aside, I and mean, we're sat here making on a Sunday afternoon from my little studio and, and your stu your house. And, and actually, isn't that lovely that that's come about from a negative lockdown experience? We actually created this, and, and that's what's come from this. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the, the lovely thing is, actually, you know, we've kind of made lots of friendships um, through, uh, you know, through chatting online and, and, and getting involved in workshops and things. And uh, yeah, I think it's been a tremendous positive, really. There's a lot of good come from, from you know, from a sad situation. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, I wouldn't say I've enjoyed COVID, but, um, but I've certainly, um, I think, made the best of a, of a bad situation. And, and uh, yeah, Definitely. and, you know, we wouldn't be here chatting away if it wasn't for this. So, no, um, yeah. yeah. So what are you making now? Because I I'm really intrigued. While we've been doing that, Jim's just squirreling away in the background, which is this is the whole point. You could sit here, you could watch this with your friends and family. I actually did one where we watched uh, a, a YouTube of Jim's, and me and my family made what we were doing, and then we shared sent pictures to Jim. So I'm going to guess that you're making something that a penguin might like to eat. Absolutely. Well, I'm making a wrapped fish parcel. <laughs> like a, a kind of. Following your lead on the wrapping ribbon, I'm just making a red ribbon that's going to go round it and crisscross, and then he's going to hold it in his arms. And yeah, you know, it's those nice little kind of touches that really um, add some personality uh, to a build. And what is quite a simple make can be really elevated into something a bit more complicated. And um, yeah, we've got a few a few suggestions here. Um, someone said um, I put a Christmas hat on my penguin. Someone's made theirs from marzipan. And someone's asking about Sean the Sheep 3. But I think that Jim, uh, Jim, even if he knew, would not be the person to spill the beans on anything like that, unfortunately. Absolutely, my but, lips are sealed. 
<laughs> so um, I, I think what we'll do while, while you're making that, Jim, if that's all right, um, is we'll have a little look. If people want to pop their hands up or, or whatever, we can have a look at uh, some of the creations, if you fancy it. That would be lovely. Yes, yeah, so nice. Um, okay. Can you talk about the marzipan? Actually? Lost Jim's sound for a second there, which is strange. I don't know what, what happened there. But, um, but I'll pad. Uh, can't hear him. Uh, I can't at my end. You might be able to hear him, but I can't hear him. Here, Jim, at my end. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at some of the creations. So, yes, I'm just trying to have a look at this and look at a gallery view. And oh, wow, here we go. Look at these. Oh, uh, look. There we go, Jim, I can hear you, which is fantastic. Um, oh, look, this yeah, is fantastic. Great. Oh, I like so, the blue penguin. Look at the orange uh, belly patch. That's rather fabulous as well. Look at these. Look at these. They're fantastic. We've got a snow penguin as well. <laughs> oh, they're oh. really cute. Super cute. Well, Jim, these oh, look at that purple. troop of makers are coming up behind you rather fast, I think, Jim. I think you need to put your CV together and get yourself sorted because this lot look rather good. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a whole army of people. I like the... Um, Oh, Wilbur's uh, rubber glove there as well. That's uh, that's right. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got a cat as well that came onto there. I know you often struggle with hairs in yours as well. So we've got um, Maya has made uh, some wonderful uh, creations. Thanks, Liz. We've got uh, Megan as well. They're holding theirs up. Laura, uh, Mitchy, is it? Um, Sandy is there as well. Wilbur, I'm loving that. Look at the little. He's made a little tiny hat, like a Feathers McGraw type hat, I think. Um, an amazing green penguin there as well. I'm liking those. I'm loving the yeah. the um the kind of off the wall colours. I think they work really well. That's fantastic. And we've got Caitlin there. As that you've got a whole troop there, your family, wonderful <laughs> creations, and, and Claire as well. You're holding Claire has got hers held up as well. Fantastic. Brilliant. There's so many wonderful creations there. Um, and there's a whole um, army going on there as well. Absolutely amazing. Um, uh, and I apologise for saying I couldn't hear Jim. It must be at my end because everyone else could hear him. So I'm just uh, <laughs> typically it's one of those things. Is like, well, it must be someone else's problem, not mine. Um, <laughs> so I um, mean, thank you guys for sharing those. That is fantastic to see them. What I'd love to see um, is for you to uh, get some wonderful photographs and to share them on Instagram. And if you can tag uh, through your parents' uh, accounts, um, Craft Festival or at Digital Craft Festival, both of them. And if you can also uh, tag, um, if you can tag Jim, uh, which is at Jim Parkin, uh, and also uh, you can tag me at Andy Greenacre if you wish, and we'll obviously be able to uh, be able to see them all and, and, sh and share them far and wide and, and, and see them on our stories. We're, um, Jim, do you love that part of teaching? Totally. I think it's so nice. The reveal at the end of seeing what people have created um, is always brilliant. And even if you're in the same room, there's always a surprise. But um, the great thing about the grid and it being faceless is when people pop up and show them, it's, you know, you're seeing it for the first time and it's really, really exciting. And um, some really great characters there as well. I think that's absolutely amazing. I'm loving that. I'm totally, yeah, totally enamoured with, with um, the different colours and the different individual um, personalities that it will be given. Really beautiful. I love that. And I think it's thank you for all of you guys for joining in and sharing those. It's quite, it's quite a scary thing sharing your creations and, yeah. and sharing them to the world. But I mean, it is the way to, to get confidence and to, to hear great response. And you just had guys out there who shared things. You've just had Jim Parkin say that your creations are very good. Now that is an accolade you can take with you. And you can go to school and tell people that a, a model maker has given you a green stamp of approval so there a gold stamp of approval even so um jim can we have a look at your present that you've made for your penguin and perhaps we can hold up um uh, your penguin as well oh here we go he's got his fish supper but he doesn't know what it is because it's wrapped so he wouldn't have any clue um and i'm guessing that will be a frozen one that goes back in the freezer it would smell a little bit by christmas otherwise uh, yeah i think so it could be dried could be uh, yeah <laughs> There we go. And there's my little creations. My, my, my little chubby chap can sit on the top of the present and I'll, and I'll get a photograph of that later. I know there's lots of you joining in across uh, across the world, I guess. There's people from other countries watching as well. Um, 
And I kind of like wanted to wrap up by uh, sort of saying massive thank you to Sarah James for inviting myself to host this as a super fan of, uh, of model making and Jim Parkin. And, and a huge thank you and a round of applause from everybody uh, for Jim for joining us on this Sunday afternoon and, and uh, sharing the joy of model making uh, and also behind the scenes and I can see her on the screen she's been busy working and making sure that we stay sane it's Merrin as well yeah, and all the folks you, at Craft Festival so Jim have you got anything you want to leave uh, and say to everybody? Um, I think um, I'm just really uh, thrilled that so many people have joined us today it's you know it's Sunday afternoon there are other things you could be doing and you've chosen to spend some time playing with plasticine so keep doing it really um, if you want to bring them to life have a go at uh, downloading some free apps and have a go at actually creating some animation as well. Or um, send us lots of pictures of your um, amazing creations. And if you do make a Christmas cake festooned in penguins, then yeah, absolutely please share that with us as well. We'd love to see that. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. It's been a really lovely afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much. And guys, so you can head over to Digital uh, Craft Festival on Instagram. But if you go to www.craftfestival.co.uk, there's also the YouTube channel where this will be uploaded um, at some time in the future. So you'll be able to watch it back. You may even have a guest appearance on that recording. Um, and it just leaves me to say thank you so much, Jim. Thanks, all the team at Craft Festival. And we'll catch you very soon. And I think it's probably have a lovely Christmas. Thanks, guys. Bye.